Hello, Dr. Tatiana Borisek is here. Hi, Adrian. Uh, I'm here in studio today with Adrian Alipus, an NSU, NSU MD student, class of 2024. Uh, we would like to talk a little bit about uh, nutrition and specifically about glycemic index and glycemic load. Those are the terms that we all hear on the news, on Google, and uh, on uh, when we discuss in the diets. So Adrian is here to help us to decode it. Your your uh, uh, your time your turn, Adrian. Sure. So the glycemic index is an estimate of how quickly carbohydrates are broken down during digestion, and how rapidly those carbohydrates are then absorbed into the bloodstream. So why is it important uh, to know about glycemic index and uh, how would you know which foods are higher or low or, or medium glycemic index? So the reason that glycemic index is important is that the speed at which the carbohydrates are digested and uh, the sugars are incorporated into your bloodstream can affect how insulin is released. And so that, that begs the question, what is insulin? Well, insulin is a hormone that modulates how your body controls the glucose in your blood. And you want to avoid uh, becoming insulin resistant because if you always have very high levels of sugars in your blood, eventually over time, the cells will not be able to respond to these signals telling you that the blood sugars are high. And so what will happen is you will remain chronically elevated with your blood glucose levels. And that can have lots of problems all throughout your body. It can affect your kidneys, your blood vessels, your heart, your eyes, your nerves, pretty much anywhere that blood flows, it can affect it. So what kind of foods uh, do you, uh, would, for example, have high glycemic index? So foods such as uh, high sugar drinks like sodas, candies, white rice, all these foods that have simple carbohydrates have a very high glycemic index. And which one's the low? Foods that are low glycemic index would be things like your vegetables, your leafy greens, uh, your broccoli. Uh, certain fruits also uh, may have a low glycemic index. Right, that brings us to the next to the next step, glycemic load. So glycemic load is pretty much glycemic index itself, but it takes into account the amount of the certain food that we eat. So, um, so it could be calculated as glycemic load. So you take a banana that has certain glycemic index, but then you take two bananas and glycemic load of one banana versus two bananas would be different, although it's the same product, right? So how say in the same uh, extent, you can compare uh, foods like, right, you have a candy, correct? That has a high glycemic index, but then you have a small piece of candy, which could be, could carry the same glycemic load as sweet potato that has a uh, lower glycemic index. But then if you eat five pounds of potato, it has the same glycemic load. So that would be a very useful tool to measure amount of food you eat and to simplify the meal, meal planning. Yeah, certainly. So you want to keep glycemic load uh, in mind. It's exactly like in that example you gave, um, or you might have a candy that has a high glycemic index, but the total glycemic load may be smaller if the amount of candy you're eating is significantly lower. Right, so just because a food has a lower glycemic index does not mean that you can necessarily eat as much as you want. Like in your example, if you eat pounds and pounds of sweet potatoes, you're, you may be negating many of the nutritional benefits of eating a lower glycemic index food. So where would you find the, uh, where would you find the numbers uh, about glycemic index of the foods? I believe the American Diabetes Association on their website has uh, guides for nutrition and on there they should have um, some information regarding uh, what foods have what glycemic index and where, the, the, where they lie on the scale. Certain foods have a medium glycemic index as well and it's, it's absolutely a range.
I see. Thank you. Thank you. So what uh, in, in the recommendations, what diet would you recommend and like give it like overall review of, of diet that would be like a, a healthy diet with foods that low glycemic index or which foods to avoid, let's say? Certainly. So first of all, the most important aspect to keep in mind with any diet is that it is a diet you can maintain. Uh, a diet can be proven to work very well and have a lot of efficacy, but if you are unable to stick to this diet, then it's really not going to be effective at all. Second of all, uh, I think it's very important to remember that if your goal is weight loss or even weight maintenance, uh, you will want to keep in mind the total amount of calories you're consuming. So for weight loss, you're going to want to be in a net calorie deficit. So you're going to want to keep in mind how many calories you're consuming. And if your goal is to lose weight, you want to consume less calories in a day than you burn. With regards to what foods to avoid, um, you want to try and avoid, avoid certain high glycemic index, high sugar content foods. Um, you want to avoid drinks with a high sugar contact, such as sodas, uh, certain sweet teas, um, as well as processed red meats. Those have all been shown to increase one's risk for diabetes and to just be very unhealthy. Oh, thank you very much. So yes, definitely those uh, two indexes uh, can be very, very mm -hmm. helpful to simplify your meal planning. Uh, you, which way, uh, because there's many, many diets that uh, we can follow, one can follow, and uh, just by simply knowing glycemic index of certain food and glycemic load, and we'd be able to calculate glycemic load makes it much, e much easier and more predictable uh, for someone to predict the amount of insulin uh, produced and uh, uh, insulin response of the body uh, and easy to manage uh, post-workout meal, uh, somebody who is diabetic, to how much insulin to inject and things like that. Certainly. And there have been certain diets that have been shown to be more effective at helping one achieve an improved glycemic control. Um, so diets such as the Mediterranean diet uh, have been shown to be highly effective. Um, and this diet, you know, some of the staples uh, uh, include um, eating a large amount of minimally processed plant-based foods, um, having olive oil as the principal source of fat. Um, they also incorporate a low to moderate amount of dairy, uh, poultry, fish. They have a low consumption of red meat as well as a low amount of, met, of wine with their meals. Interesting. Yes, definitely. So, yes. So in recap, uh, what would you recommend to your patients in one sentence? I would say eat healthy foods high in fiber that do not exceed how many calories you burn in a day and are foods that are healthy and you enjoy that you can eat on a regular basis and are not hard for you to stick with. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Uh, I hope to see you again uh, with our next conversation. And uh, please uh, refer to the link below and uh, give us any ideas, uh, what kind of questions you would like to have answered in our future discussions. And uh, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye.